Good morning, my fine specimens of unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine. There's one thing I like about this COVID lockdown. I get time to craft really good answers to questions I'm sure many of you have. And one of the questions I got was, why was my covalent bonding different than some of the other teachers? And I'm going to start with this. I think one of the flaws in teaching, it's nobody's fault directly, it's just been built into the system, is very frequently you're taught to memorize diagrams, not the concept that the diagram is showing. And I normally save this for ecology. Every one of you has seen the water cycle diagram before. How was I tested on this when I was your age? You'd have a poster like this. Teacher would tell you to memorize it. Then one day you got it on the test and the words were written out, just blanks, and you had to fill it in. You had been taught to memorize a diagram. And all you have to do to stumble the student up completely is do this. Flip it left to right. Change the graphic. It's showing the same concept, but it will immediately cause students to fail. They'll go, that's not the way it was at my other school. It's different. No, it isn't different. It's just illustrated differently. I don't think teachers do enough on this. I do in ecology, because it's a great place for this, to start looking at the idea of a diagram is to teach you a concept, not to teach you the diagram. And if you can understand that, you can move a lot faster through your learning when you're paying attention to the concept, not the font that was used to present the concept to you. I like to call my notation the Kaladi notation, but I was taught by other people. And there was a retired teacher at our school that had a particular way that he liked to do covalent bonding, and I found it to be acceptable, and it was in a textbook at the time. And the way the covalent bonding was done was simply to bring the atoms together. I found it easier to move the empties to the outside. You pass an electron forward. If it wants one, it shares one. You mark it with an X. The other atom does the same thing. You mark it with an X. I can take away the original positions for clarity. In class, I would take my finger and lightly rub them off on the blackboard and leave a smudge. And then we encourage you to circle the shared zone. Now this clearly demonstrates the idea of sharing. We can also demonstrate that every atom looks like it has eight electrons in its outer shell. And your diagram won't have the faded out spots because how can you do that? You wind up with a diagram that looks like this. That is not how the other textbooks show it. So let's look at some common alternatives. Frequently, instead of putting an X in the shared zone, they'll just put dots. And they won't draw these empties. As I said, that's Kaladi notation. In many cases, they won't even show the shared zone. They'll just show this. Sometimes they'll put an oval to indicate sharing there. Sometimes nothing at all. But in all cases, it's the same concept. The formation of the diatomic molecule chlorine, Cl2. I've seen it where they put an X or two X's. Sometimes instead of this light green, I seem to be the only one that color codes this stuff. Instead of light green, this side is all X's and this side is just open circles and they'll do an X and an O or they'll put X's in both positions. But nothing has changed. It's really just a font difference. When you hit grade 11, 
they'll do this instead. By then, you've been trained enough that you automatically know it's a covalent bond, so why bother with all those little dots and things? You use them when you need to. Almost in a way like fingering on a piano. When you're little, the piano notes are all labeled with the finger you should use. By the time you get into your rudiments of music, they stop putting down the fingering unless it's really required. You're in an advanced piano piece and the fingering, you'll never figure it on your own and they'll just put in the fingering just for a small bit to help you out. My notation is kind of like the training wheels of covalent bonding. This is the version I hate. I don't see this one too often. I see this quite frequently. And I'm sorry, that shouldn't be on a professional website. That's just lazy. Can you see as a teacher grading this stuff why I like my notation and my structured diagrams? Gotta remember, I'm teaching you. I need to do as professional a job as I can. But when you're submitting work to be graded, you should be trying to do your best to make the teacher's job easy. And I don't want that to sound elitist, but you got to think about this. There's over 30 of you in each of my classes. There are 12 diagrams I'm going to mark. That's 90 students times 12. <laughs> That's 1,080 diagrams. I got old eyes. I'm half blind. I fell off my ladder today and I broke my fall by landing on a saw. And then I got to mark this stuff and I'm like, oh, no, he's got the wrong count of electrons. And then you point out later, oh, it's a smudge on the paper. This makes it really hard to understand. When you're just jotting it down in crib notes, yeah, but no, I don't want to see it like that. Um, because it's masking, did you really understand it? I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. I'm sick of the microphone taking its time to record away. Must be ready by now. Here are the five common notations I see out there. The first one is mine. With the idea of sharing to the center. These circle zones showing how each chlorine has its pool of eight. Down below are the two most common other notations I see. If I've left it color-coded, you kind of go, oh, I get the shared pool. But in most other cases, they don't color-code at all. I'm the only one that bothers with this three-dimensional drop shadow organization. So this diagram, this diagram, and this one are all the same. It's just levels of neatness and levels of assistance. I find the color coding very valuable. If you struggle to draw these diagrams, give yourself the benefit of the doubt, get two different colors of pen, and you will find it is much easier to follow. It's not you being stupid. It's just a question of is this too crude looking to really convince you? And finally, there's the structural model drawn like this. Look at these five diagrams and tell me which one's the best. Which one conveys the notion of sharing most completely? And you know it's mine. This one just like screams out sharing. If you walked into my classroom late and you saw this on the board and I said, we're showing shared bonding, can you not see the steps that took place? And if on a multiple choice, this diagram showed up and it asked you to identify if it was a shared or donation bond, the very drawing itself gives away that it's a shared bond. If you came into my classroom and saw this, you'd be like, what was he doing? 
And let's say there's another little mark on the chalkboard like this red dot. You might even miscount. Even if you understood it, you might go, I think he had a lesson about a letter C being attacked by a swarm of flies while a snake came out of the ground and was going to like eat his face like alien movie. Does this mean my version of the Lewis dot is the best in the world? Heck no, it's got flaws. It's the busiest diagram. And what it fails to show that a lot of chemistry teachers put great emphasis on is the notion of a complete outer shell, an octet. Let's look at this one here. A neat version of this scribble. Stare at the left chlorine. Can you not see there's a complete octet around here? It's like your brain assembles these green circles to go with a left one. Now if you switch your gaze to the right side chlorine, your brain will automatically group these eight together. And you will perceive it to be one chlorine surrounded by eight, and this other chlorine is only surrounded by six. So the idea of the grouped outer electrons forming an octet around their core element is very visible here. The trouble is, when you see the complete diagram, you don't see the steps it took to get there. And that's why this notation is a great way to present it without the need for a large amount of animation. And that's why I've chosen to do it. So consider my notation the training wheels of bonding. And as time goes on, you start taking the training wheels off till you can scribble like this and get your answer. Though I still am a sucker for neatness and well-done diagrams. Why have I gone to the trouble of doing this three-dimensional raising? Because I deal with students with all sorts of learning difficulties. You know I'm colorblind, so I like intense color. And I find this is very helpful, and it's something I'm going to use year after year after year. So I'm going to put a professional grade job into it, something I wouldn't be able to do live on a blackboard in front of you. Therefore, I'm not going to expect this kind of professional layout from you. But if it works to teach you better, then I'm all for it. What you can do yourself, if you decide to use this notation next year, is I think color coding really helps keep it clear. The oxygen molecule, here are four ways of drawing it. All I did was type in oxygen molecule O2, Lewis dot diagram, and I came up with these three common ones that are drawn. This is strictly a textbook version. No chemist would ever draw that. You would see one of these two. Look at mine again. Does mine convey the essence of shared outer electrons better than the ones below? I think it does. But eventually, we want you just to be able to jump to this. And in fact, very frequently, they won't show the outer dots at all. I want you to be adaptable. I want you to be able to look at the different pictures and go, oh, I understand the concept that is being shown, even though this textbook is using a diagram that is different from the last one. If you are learning the concept underlying the diagram, then changes to the diagram will not trip you up. If you, instead you are just memorizing the diagram, then you are trapped to that one diagram and you're not really taking in the concept underneath. That doesn't prevent you to have a favorite method, but understand there are many methods for the same idea. Structural chemistry would be where I would have started if I had my way. I taught myself structural chemistry as a kid because I had no idea I wasn't supposed to learn it because I found this really cool book. 
And I'll show you where my fold diagrams, not even my fold diagrams, get nasty. What if two carbons wanted to marry some hydrogens? Well, first of all, we're going to share one between them and we're going to have the other carbons. And I've adopted the non-colati notation. I haven't put the empties in. Do you find that harder to look at with the empties not showing? Don't ever tell the other teachers they put the empties in. Here's what it's going to look like when the hydrogens come in. Not using my notation, but using the simplified notation. No circles, no arrows. What if I said I wanted you to do C4H10? This is going to be like worse than a twister game. The standard Lewis dots can get really busy really fast. So guess how structural chemistry draws this? Ah! Just like that. And that's how I learned chemistry in a book I got that I shouldn't have owned at age seven or eight. And I was like merrily making these things with the stick and socket construction, not these Lewis dots on the right. Learn your way through the Lewis dots and then eventually graduate to a mishmash of techniques that you need. But in the end, all you're trying to show is how atoms get together and bond by either donating electrons or sharing them. That's the concept. The rest is really just the font you've chosen. So hopefully this will help you to be adaptable. And I'm gonna do a lot more of this in ecology, but I thought it was about time I formalized this for chemistry. This is a good opportunity to put this in here because you're gonna see, just try it out. Pick an element we study, type it's Lewis dot diagram for Lewis dot diagram of water. And you're gonna see a variety of ways. But once you know what you're looking at, you go, oh yeah, he's just changed the way he's done it, no big deal.